everybody to week four of Exponential. I'm so excited that we're on this journey together discovering who God is calling us to be in this new season. We've been on quite the journey so far. Uh, week one, we looked back and celebrated well 40 years as a church at Grace Fellowship Church. And then week two, we began to talk about foundations. Last week, we talked about the first major category that we're leaning into together and that was exponential disciple making. And certainly that is what God is calling us to do. That is our assignment, is to not only become disciples of Jesus, but become the kind of disciples who are also making other disciples. And so as we do that really well by awakening, awakening and growing and equipping and multiplying, today what I wanna do is I wanna shift to a second major category of this exponential initiative that we are calling the exponential expansion portion of what we're doing. Category one is exponential disciple making. Today, I wanna to talk to you about exponential expansion. To get us started, I wanna just mention to you again, Matthew chapter 22. Matthew 22 is such a powerful uh, chapter, a powerful portion of scripture because it's, it's there that Jesus calls his disciples together and he tells them a story. Here's the story. He says, look, there was a man, a ruler, a rich ruler who went away to do some business. While he was gone, he divvied up some of his resources and gave them out to three different servants. To the first one, he gave five bags of money. To the second servant, he gave him two bags of money. To the third servant, he gave them one bag of money and then he went away the bible says that while he was gone jesus tells the story that while the ruler was gone the man who had received five bags of money he did wise he invested the money he was smart with the money and he created five more bags of money so he doubled his master's money this the man who received two talents or two bags of money he also doubled that money and then the one who had received one bag of money unfortunately he hid the money in order to not lose it. And so he's thinking he's doing a good job. I didn't lose my master's money, but he did nothing with it. So then the master comes back. He calls his servants together, wants to know what they did with the money they were given. The man who had gotten five, he doubled his master's money. Master said, well done, good and faithful servant. The man who had received two, same thing. Well done, good and faithful servant. And then the man who had received one bag of money came to him and said, Master, I understood you to be a strict man. I didn't want to lose your money, so I hid it. Now here's your money back. Now, for most of us, we look at that story and we say, what's the problem? But apparently for Jesus, he was intending to teach us something about the one who buried the money and did nothing with it. Because what we hear out of the mouth of the one who came back, the master who had given the money in the first place, what he said to that servant is, you wicked and lazy servant, at least what you could have done is invested my money at the bank and drawn interest and given me something back for the money that I gave you. Now, here is a very important, critical point that I want you to catch from this story. According to Jesus, Faithfulness in God's kingdom is not maintenance. Maintenance, not losing something, does not equal faithfulness in God's kingdom. Faithfulness instead is highlighted by the first two servants, one who doubled his master's money from five bags to ten, and one who doubled his master's money from two bags to four. In a sense, in a real sense, what Jesus was critiquing the, is the, the Jewish people at the time in telling this story is what he was saying to them is God has invested so much into you as a people. You have the message, which is the hope of the world, and yet you've kept it all for yourself. My goodness. In other words, they had buried the treasure that God had invested invested into them god had entrusted with them see if we go all the way back to genesis 12 the very first time that god calls abraham who was the father of the jewish people 
we see that God gave Abraham a commission and he said to him, I'm going to bless you, not for yourself, but so that you can bless all nations. Don't just keep this covenant to yourself. Don't just keep this relationship with the Lord to yourself, but perpetuate it and use the resources and the blessing that I'm giving you in order to reach the world for me. That's God's plan. That's what he was trying to do through the Jewish people. And yet they buried it, they hoarded it for themselves. And Jesus tells this story and in essence calling those people wicked and lazy servants. Now, here's what's important for us today. There is an expectation that God has for you and for me, that the resources, the message, the love, the encounter that we have had with Jesus, the, the expectation is from God that we would be faithful with what we've been given. And here's the big idea. Faithfulness is not maintenance in God's kingdom. Faithfulness is expansion. <laughs> Faithfulness is actually taking what we've been given and growing it, taking what we've been given and leveraging it to reach more people. In other words, there will be a moment where we have to give an account for what we have done with the resources and the opportunity and the time that we have been given. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to stand before the Lord someday and hear him say to me, you were lazy. You played it safe. You didn't lose anything, but you also didn't expand it. You didn't grow it. And so here's what I want you to feel with me today. That as a church in this season of exponential, what we hear the Lord saying to us is that not only internally are we going to be focused on exponential disciple making, but externally, he is calling us to take risk and to grow and to expand. This is why over the next 10 years in this exponential initiative, we're going to be focused in three ways. Number one, we're going to see exponential expansion through planning multicultural regional churches. We're going to do 10 of those over the next 10 years. We're gonna to continue to plant churches. Here's what I love about this, is that this has always been true about grace, even from the very beginning. So many churches have been planted and have come from this place. We're not reinventing anything. We're just simply recommitting ourselves to who we've always been as a church. So we're going to see exponential expansion through church plants. The second category is multi-site campuses. Those will be more local in nature. We're gonna start those through compassionate acts of service in local communities around us and see where that goes and see how God establishes new Grace Fellowship Church campuses in the area. And then finally, we're going to see exponential increase and expansion through our partnership in overseas ministries and partnering with them to see international church plans. All of these are ways that we can be faithful with what God has given us to continue to take risk, to step out and to move forward. Here's my ask for you today. My ask is that you would begin to pray and consider what God would have you do to participate in this exciting, exciting new vision that he's given us called Exponential. There's a thing, there's something for all of us to do. He's calling all of us to pray. He's calling all of us to serve and to participate. And he's calling all of us to give sacrificially. We'll talk more about that next week. But in the meantime, I want you to feel that God has us on mission and we're headed somewhere big. Be in prayer with me. In fact, let's pray together right now. Lord God, thank you so much for this opportunity to use well what you have given us to continue to expand and reach people for Jesus. I'm so glad that we're a church that's committed to being on mission and not just maintaining. I'm so glad that we're a church that resembles the, 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 the servant who received five bags of gold and not just the one who buried it so not to lose it. I pray, God, that you would challenge us today to go even further and to be faithful with what you've given us. I pray this today in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.
God bless you, everybody. Thanks for being on the journey with us. Enjoy your conversations in small groups. Thank you.